sing for us during the Sunday school time, just uh, one song, and then he's going to introduce uh, a lawyer from India who is involved in the Lord's work and planting churches and so forth. And so I'll let him introduce uh, these folks from India. Come ahead, Brother Snethern, and, uh, and pray for us, if you would. Can I use this here? <laughs> uh, I'm going to sing, and then uh, I'll go ahead and introduce uh, Brother Ramesh Sagali. Now, that sounds Italian, but he is not Italian. Uh, but uh, I, he loved the story about uh, uh, Ronald and Nancy Reagan, uh, where that they were walking through a cemetery, and they were looking at the headstones, and the epitaph on one of them said, Here lies a lawyer and an honest man. And Ronald Reagan turned to Nancy and said, Nancy? There must be two men in that grave. And so <laughs> Brother Ramesh likes that. But Brother, Brother Ramesh, let me tell you just a little bit, and you'll enjoy his testimony this morning. Uh, but uh, I actually met Brother Ramesh um, uh, about a legal uh, matter that I was dealing with pertaining to some land in India. A friend introduced uh, me to him and said it would be good to have him because he was a lawyer, that it was a godly man, and he trusted him. And so uh, myself, Brother Ryan, and Brother Wheeler went to his home, and uh, I gave him the trust papers to look at. And he said, before I look at these, could would you all mind if I gave my testimony? And he did. And I thought, my, uh, what a blessing it would be for others to hear that testimony. So God worked it out uh, that he and his wife Esther could come. Uh, just uh, in, a, in a nutshell, he's going to give a salvation testimony, saved out of Hinduism. Uh, God called him into the ministry. Uh, he pastored uh, and started four churches. Uh, he felt that God was calling him uh, to do two things, to get involved uh, in training people to plant churches in the numerous villages in India that have no gospel witness. Is, and then his state is the second worst state in India for Christian persecution. Many, many pastors are beaten and jailed and uh, Christian persecution is prevalent there. And so he felt God was leading him to get a law degree uh, so that he could defend those Christians. And he does that free of charge to those Christians. And uh, I asked him, I said, have you ever heard of David Gibbs and Christian Law Association? He said, no, sir, never heard of them. But anyway, that's kind of what he's doing in India. But you'll be blessed by his testimony in just a few minutes. So I want to try to sing a song called When Jesus Passed By. Do I have to turn this on, brother? Is it? There it is right there. <laughs> A cripple starts walking, a blind man can see, a leper is cleansed, and a captive set free, a woman is rejoicing. Her son did not die, and all these things happened when Jesus passed by. When Jesus passed by, when Jesus passed by, gone. trouble and strife you can reach out and touch him and he'll hear you cry and you'll know something happened when Jesus passed by listen to these words now now I was a beggar In the rags of my sin I was wealthy without 
but oh so needy within then the king became my savior now his riches are mine and i became god's child when jesus passed by when jesus passed by when jesus passed by gone were all the heartaches the trouble and strife you can reach out and touch him and he'll hear you cry and you'll know something happened when jesus passed by yes you'll know something happened when jesus passed by so good to be here i love your pastor there are so many stories i could tell on him but if i told them you probably would not want him to be your pastor anymore so i'll i'll not tell those stories he knows a lot on me too so let's just make a truce today brother rick uh brother ramesh good to have you with us you you come and and uh, give your testimony to our folks this morning It's a great blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Uh, really, firstly, thank God for such an opportunity that God has given me to come and visit the church. I love your, love your pastor. Thank you, pastor, for allowing me to uh, use a few minutes to share my testimony of how the Lord has brought me from the darkness into the marvelous light. And uh, I bring uh, greetings and uh, blessings from India to all of you from our churches back home and my family on behalf of my country I want to just tell you that we love you and we are praying for you my name is Ramesh Sagili and my wife is here she is Esther she is a pharmacist I am a Baptist <laughs> so I I am very privileged to be here uh, because of Brother Snither and um, he has been a tremendous blessing in the nation of India through his uh, stepping into my country. There are thousands of souls who got saved and uh, thousands of children are being fed with the gospel as well as the physical food. I am very much thankful to uh, Sister Wanda and uh, Brother Snither for your dedication, for commitment for my nation. I thank. Uh, God for you all. In India, we have uh, 1.3 billion people. Out of that, we have 83 percent of our population is Hindus. 13 percent are Muslims, and just merely 3 to 4 percent are Christians. There are more Muslims in India than in Pakistan because Muslims can marry four wives. My American friend says one is plenty. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Pastor says that's right. <laughs> and uh, according to Hinduism, in India, you can choose anything as your God. Monkey, moon, stars, water, tree, stone, any images made out of man. You can choose anything as your God, as a mode of worship. And in India, we have 2,000 people groups. And we speak 398 languages, out of which 22 languages are official. And in India, we have 6,038,000 villages, out of which 1,040,000 villages have not heard the name of Jesus Christ. That's the reason Brother Paul and uh, sister who comes to India and uh, uh, working with the national to train the national pastors we thank God for you all 
coming there and uh, training people. The people heard the name of Jesus Christ in this few thousands of villages, but not in one million forty thousand villages. The people, still, we are trying to take the gospel into those villages. In Hinduism, it's the darkest country in the whole world, probably India, the darkest continent with idolatry, with the darkness. In Hinduism, as you, as I told that you can choose anything as your god. When I was uh, a child, I uh, I observed my grandparents, my parents, they are worshiping a cobra snake as our god. Our parents chose my forefathers as a cobra snake as our god. So as I was growing up, I was in the temple, and I will see once in a week or twice in a week the snake will come into our temple. And uh, my parents, my grandparents, they offer the milk and the eggs to the snake god, and they prostrate and they worship. They think when the snake comes, the god has visited us, so we are blessed or something like that. But as I was growing up, when I was 17 years old, I was bold enough to ask my parents, "Daddy, mummy, do you think uh, this snake god is true, god?" I don't think it's true because when the day when you stop giving milk and egg, that will bite us and kill us. It won't be a, a, a true God. Now you understand why I have become a liar. <laughs> I was asking. Then there was a great, great emptiness in my heart. I had my father was a mechanical engineer. We had a good family, a good house, good money, worldly pleasures. I was going to the clubs, playing sports, everything like that. But there's emptiness in my heart. I was a religious man, going to the temple, very alternate days, spending time in the temple and worshiping this cobra snake. But there is a emptiness which cannot be filled with any other thing. I was searching for a true God who can give me a peace. So I was asking my father, my mother, and I was very constant in asking my mother, "Mummy, I am not happy. Please help me. That I want to know the, who is the true God, and who can give me peace. I am not happy by coming to the temples." Somehow my mother told me, "Son, I I might help you. You can just go and meet a man who comes to our village every Friday. You can go and meet him. He might help you." So I was waiting for that Friday. Uh, that Friday came, and uh, I went and met this man. He is a Baptist evangelist who comes with the uh, uh, Bible and uh, gospel tracts to our village every Friday. So I went and asked him, "Is sir, is your Jesus is true God? You know my grandparents. You know my parents. We all worshippers of this snake God. But I don't have peace in my heart. Is your Jesus is God? Is true God?" Can you give peace for me, Ramesh? Would you like to sit with me? I want to help you. Yes, yes, sir. I, I'll be glad to sit with you. Then I sat with him for a few minutes, and he showed from the scriptures that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, for the wages of sin is death. You know, Roman road method. He showed me all the references, and the Holy Spirit of God convicted me that I am sinner. He told me that you are sinner. You need to accept. That you are a sinner, I repent of your sin, and ask the Lord, who died on the cross of Calvary for your sin, ask Him to come into your heart. Then you'll receive the peace. He said, "Okay, let me try." In Hinduism, you can uh, take any god, one of the god. You know, there are thousands of god. But I thought, you know, let me take Jesus as also one among our god. So I knelt down with him in 1993, December 18th at 8:45 p.m. I knelt down with him and I asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into my heart and I forgive him all my sin and I'll make him a Lord and Savior of my life. I asked him to wash away all my sin with his blood. So when I prayed, after my prayer, I saw there's a great uh, joy in my heart. There's a smile in my face. I was a different man, different person. Then I have gone home and um, I was reading my New Testament. 
then i stopped going gradually to the temple and i stopped eating the food which has been offered to the idols so i was looking at different person in my family my parents are watching my brothers are watching few months later my father wanted me to become an engineer so he joined me in an engineering school and i went to a engineering school and 3 months later i quit that school and came back home and my parents asked me uh, why did you come i said uh, daddy i'm not happy over there son you are not coming to the temple you are not eating any food that has been offered to the, our god and now you are uh, just uh, coming out of the school we spend lot of money to pay for your school then i said uh, no i am not happy to be engineer then my mother and my father again after some time they came back and uh, they came to my room and asked son what else you want to become what is your desire to become then i told mummy do you remember you told me few weeks back to meet that man who comes to our village every friday holding in his hand bible and uh, gospel tracts i want to be like that man i want to just go and tell about jesus christ how we can give the peace for those who are suffering without peace and he is a true god who gave me peace i want to tell others i want to be just like that man going to villages to tell about jesus christ and my father was mad at me he got angry he said are you becoming a christian you are not going to stay in my house if you are becoming a christian we are a hindus my forefathers my parents my grandparents are hindus so you need not to stay in my house then after some time my because of my grandmother was there things become cooler and uh, my father told me after a few days son you can become a christian no problem with me but i will never support you even 1 dollar for your future education i might support you i might support my one daughter and two other brothers your brothers but i will not support you your wish whatever you want to do you do it then i said okay dad that's fine i don't know what to do but i said okay because i escaped the beatings uh, so i said okay that's fine then uh, i just left uh the home i came to bangalore city where brothers neither came to my hometown and he has seen my house where i born and brought up where he has seen my grandfather and my father build that temple so from that place to bangalore city is a 100 km away so i came to bangalore city with the bible and the two pairs of dress and i didn't know what to do that i asked one of the pastor sir i want to serve god can you please help me and he told me the best way of, for you to serve the lord is first you need to have a, a bible school training it is good for you so then uh, he recommended me to a, a bob jones affiliation bible school in india i went to the college and i graduated during those days i was so disappointed and uh, i didn't know because i didn't have money to buy my shampoo or brush no proper clothes because there's no support from my parents i see in the bible school all the children are pastor children and pastor daughters they're doing very well but i was suffering and after every chapel hour i just go to the terrace and kneel down and ask the lord lord is this right place for me if i had studied a engineering school my father would have been a great support and i would not have had any lacking in my life but here i am suffering i am doing right thing lord did you call me to do this please let me know so as i was praying the lord spoke to me from the book of isaiah i just want to read a, a verse to you in uh, 93 god spoke to me through his word uh, isaiah chapter 41 was 9 and 10 thou whom i have taken from the hands of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee thou art my servant i have chosen thee and not cast thee away fear thou not for i am with thee be not dismayed for i am thy god i will strengthen thee yea i will up, i will help thee yea i will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness 
when god spoke to me from this scripture i was assured that god has called me for something else so i was very happy yes i am a servant of living god i will do whatever he says then i graduated my father, my mother was diagnosed with cancer and um, uh, i called two of my professors because i was reading the book of james i got into that verse i i called two of my professors to pray with my mother and they came and they prayed with her the doctor said your mother will not live more than one month but we went to the hospital she was in a intensive care unit they were kept all the chemotherapy the radiation something like that and we went and we prayed we anointed with the oil and we prayed with her and i told her, mommy you need to believe that jesus died on the cross for your sin you need to receive him as your god and savior said ma son if your jesus heals my disease i will believe sometimes you know we demand god same thing she was doing lord if you do this i i will believe in you i said no already jesus paid on the cross it's a provision that we need to accept it that's all is already paid it's not going to pay it's already paid you need to accept me even if you die you will be with jesus that's what i told her okay son i will believe what should i do then she prayed with me a yeah, sinner's prayer she accepted the lord after 3 months later the doctor said one month she will die but two months three months she didn't die three months later i i was very curious to know what has happened i i i and my father took her to a hospital and checked with the doctor the old report shows she has a cancer the new report shows she doesn't have cancer so we praise god for the divine healing she become a very very strong christian with that um and she is ministering for a more than 120 videos now we gather as 120 videos in my house for every day bible study she is she is taking care of that now and uh, when i was big, when i became a pastor my father called me to meet me i went back to my father and uh, talked to him and he told me he wants to become a christian he wants to believe in jesus christ then i led him to the lord and uh, uh the two people in my first in my ministry the first two people i baptized is my father and my mother and then i baptized around 900 people by this by now i don't know exactly but more than 900 people um uh, i praise god for that uh, uh, privilege that god has given me and i was pastoring a church a baptist church i was reading a uh article from the government of india that um, our government was very proud in the year 2000 in 1968 our president i mean our prime minister had passed a bill to build a, in all 6 million 38000 villages in india to build a temple with idol in that that every village people every uh here every man and woman in india would uh, approach the temple every morning and pray worship that they passed a bill they paid uh, uh probably millions of dollars i mean millions of rupees in india so 1968 they passed the bill in 2000 they very very proud of they accomplished their goal or the vision of indira gandhi the prime minister was indira gandhi so they were very proud and they are celebrating in the parliament then i was going through that article then my heart broke lord when a heathen can uh, build the temples in 6 million 38000 villages can you use me to take the gospel to at least 1 million 40000 villages in india this yes, uh, a burden in in my life and uh, i said uh, uh, the lord told me you you are going to be a missionary now i left the church and the uh, and the church elders dick and they said how you are going to leave pastor without support you are going to missionary you become you want to go to villages who who's, who who are there going to support you for the transportation 
and i said no the lord is going to support me so then uh, i i become i went to a basketball coaching i coached the basketball and um, the lord told me uh, to do a law law school and because in karnataka the state where i'm living they kill pastors and they criticize the christians for converting the hindus from hinduism and they destroyed so many churches the second worst state in our country is our, our state in the persecution orissa and gujarat and karnataka this are very strong anti christian uh, elements they use so i i want to just uh, be a blessing for the pastors uh, to bail them out and uh, to protect them as they taking the gospel to the villages i want to be a help helpful as i am going with them but uh, uh, indirectly that is my platform to uh, be in india indirectly to support the church planting work in all the villages uh, if the government comes to know i am the kingpin <laughs> they might kill me 100 100% they don't know i am the kingpin of uh, to do this church planting uh, Uh, work there but i established four churches and i am multiplying uh, the church planting ministry uh, now we got around 70 churches house churches not the church buildings like this we gather in the houses so 70 house churches we have, we got now when you see apple you can count the seed in that apple but only god can count the apples in that seed it can be a forest so i want to be me and my wife want to be a seed in the hand of god as uh, brother snither is a seed in the us and also in india we praise god for that i am going to give some time for you to ask me some questions if you don't mind i don't mind to answer you if i know something from my culture my nation and before that i just want to tell you that um, i want your prayers that as we grow the lord's work uh, i want to multiply myself i want to create 1000 rameshes uh, 10000 churches by another 30 40 years i am praying that the brothers neither and the sister wanda would live at least 100 years and uh, i am serious i am we are just seriously we are praying that they should see how their step of faith in india would accomplished in another 30 years by investing in our lives uh, we are not living by ourselves if i want to earn money i can go to the court if my wife wants to earn money she can be a pharmacist but the lord has called us to be a full time minister full time uh, missionary and i ask the church uphold us in your prayers i would uh, really appreciate for you uh, if you could pray for us and me and my wife as a ministry she takes care of 25 children she does a home schooling for the children many of them are destitute poor and uh, and uh, some of them are beggars she takes care of them uh, teaching the english and the kannada language and uh, i take care of the pastors and church planting training and my mother takes care of widows ministry and i'm very honored to be a part and parcel of uh, the vision the light light in 1040 window uh, being a blessing in my life and our our ministry life in india and we decided to be as a to die as a martyrs in india me and my wife so uh, we are not scared of the persecution we are not scared of the government we are not scared of anything but we want to take the gospel into these villages in my lifetime if not in this generation no other generation can take because of the advanced technology media transportation everything we have in this generation uh, we want to see that the gospel of jesus christ might be spread and might win the lost souls for his kingdom um, i thank god for that i have another 10 minutes uh, yes sir are you pastoring a church now are you a member of the church uh that's a wonderful uh, question um, which church i can be a member because four churches i planted uh i am just behind the churches uh, i am just supported all the churches are becoming indigenous self supporting church i have no more control over those church 
that church has to take care of their own pastor it's my i just initiate and start a bible study group and that will turn to be a church so i don't be a i'm just a member of one church uh, where we are still growing just one year old so once if the church grows to be a self supporting then i'm leave that church then i'll go to a different place where is the need of a church to be planted so you can call me as a missionary uh, a national missionary working with the national people so i am not a pastor or bishop or reverend my life two times it was threatened we need to change the two houses because the hindus didn't like we were staying in a rented apartment and uh, children were coming and uh, singing songs learning scriptures from my wife and uh, the that owner told to vacate the landlord told us to vacate the house and uh, we had a car jeep minister jeep two times they tried to break it and uh, destroy it um, and uh, one man told us if you continue to share the gospel here tell about jesus we will kill you in my village where i'm staying right now there's no church where i'm staying i'm just staying in the center of uh, hindu people who high caste people i'm we are the only christians over there the surrounding brasni that i've seen that location how we are started a small houses going eight families we reached for christ now uh, so this eight families are trying to reach others for the lord so there's a threat a continuous threat and uh, uh, I, i'm just telling you that if government comes to know i am the missionary i'm not a real lawyer i'm not the real uh, uh uh something you know different thing but if they come to know i am a church planter i am i'm sharing the love of jesus uh, they might ha- ha- they might harass me they might be in problem but uh, it's up to the lord whatever he has for me yes sir please help me the muslims brotherhood they don't do harm any christians there but hindus are more radical than muslims in india muslims they fear hindus in india the whole world might fear for uh, muslims but uh, in india hindus are more radical than muslim so hindus are the people who troubles christians hindus are the people who are in the government post they are the judges they are the politicians they are the governors so they rule whole india so they have a power they are the more dangerous people Uh, so many churches have been destroyed so many pastors are, are stripped and uh, uh, they were put into the prison they were beaten very badly one of our pastor lost his all the tooth the police people took him to the prison and uh, hit with the hand they broke all the teeth and uh, they want to kick him uh, to make him uh, important uh, so they took him to the prison and uh, they just harassed him they beaten him so badly his name is uh, uh, rajendra gowda so you can pray for that pastor uh, when brother snider comes next time he is going to meet that man he and his wife they very godly people yes sir in the state of karnataka and the state of orissa and the state of gujarat these three states if you 
or me take this gospel track and give to a person publicly if the if that man goes and complains the police station that this man is trying to convert me and you will be put into prison for 9 years non bailable so it's a very very dangerous place now we are ministering but by the lord's grace churches are growing we have baptizing people and any time any attack can come uh, but we are secured by the holy spirit and uh, he is taking care of us at present yes pastor that's a wonderful question the americans in india i mean probably whole world but in india they will highly regard and respect americans so when you come and uh, distribute a track in india they may not put you into the prison for 9 years they might deport you immediately to send you back home from uh, india they may not arrest you they will take you into the police station enquire do all the interrogations whatever they want to do and they will send you immediately in the plane they put you in the plane and send you back only for the nationals there's a problem i didn't see any ladies asking me question maybe uh, you didn't understand my english because i am from alabama <laughs> I'll, I'll yes pastor oh, there's a two uh like indian ladies or uh, american ladies indian ladies um indian ladies are treated as uh, slaves um and they should uh, sit down at the feet of husband and as uh, the wife should not eat when husband is eating wife should eat after the husband has eaten so they treat her uh, as a uh, um like slavery probably like a servant uh, when you become a believer when you become a christian that's not going to be in the family probably but uh, that is the um, uh, culture that is a tradition of our country yes ma'am yes ma'am i led uh, my father my mother and my two brothers and my one sister I led all of them to the Lord, and they are baptized with a different pastor. I didn't baptize my brothers and sister, but they have been baptized with my uh, other pastor, whom I love very much. And their children also become a Christian, and we all are missionary family now. My elder brother works for a Transworld Radio, which is gospel radio station, and my sister works in the hospital, in a Christian hospital, and my second brother works with the widows. He helps with my mother. so we are in the ministry line one more hand somebody somebody showed your hand no yes brother sunna so um i hope uh, um, you have been blessed with the what the lord has done in my life and i can i i ask you you to uphold us in your prayers that the lord might use us in a mighty way in a powerful way to exalt and honor his name alone thank you pastor thank you thank you brother all right well you know a uh, wonderful testimony but i thought of a uh, verse of scripture some of you might be thinking worshiping snakes well we got some folks in Kentucky that do that <laughs> um but look at the scripture Romans chapter 1 that might be hard to grasp thinking how could anybody in the right mind worship a snake um the lord said when people reject him and reject his word that their mind becomes darkened and he mentioned that word uh, brother ramesh mentioned the word uh, dark or darkness in india in romans chapter 1 it says 
uh, in verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was what? Darkened. Now look at verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image. Remember him talking about the images of the snakes and, and other animals, monkeys and so forth? They changed the, the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. What's that? That's snakes. <laughs> Whereunto God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Now, you know, we, we think that's insane to worship a snake, but do you know that people in America are maybe not worshiping snakes, but they do what's mentioned here. They worship their bodies and, uh, and we see a huge movement today in the homosexual movement for people to dishonor themselves with their bodies. And it talks about all of that in Romans chapter 1. Look at verse 26. It says, for, And for this cause God gave them up to, unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Now, we may not worship snakes in America, but I'll just be honest with you, I don't think homosexuality has any advantage over worshiping snakes. And it's mentioned in the same passage of Scripture where a reprobate mind leads to this darkness. And folks, we're headed that way in America. And uh, the, the culture is becoming more and more quote-unquote tolerant. And we tolerate everything except one thing, Christianity. We tolerate everything except someone who claims to be a Bible believer. If you actually believe and practice the Bible, then you're the one that's the nut in America. So... Where are we headed? Well, it's down the same road India and all the other countries in the world are headed. We're down the road of leaving God behind because we're too smart to worship God in America. Thank God for a few churches that still love him, though. Amen. And appreciate the work there in India. God bless you, brother and Miss Esther. God bless you all and the work they're doing. And uh, it is a risky work, but anything that doesn't have risk is not worth very much. And, uh, and it might get riskier here in America as we continue to preach the word, the unadulterated word. We may be arrested and jailed as well, and uh, our lives will be at risk. So we ought to thank God and pray for all those missionaries just like these folks. Well, we'll be dismissed for a few minutes, and then we'll meet back in here at 11 o'clock. And uh, Brother Sneathern, and uh, we're going to have several, several singing this morning. And, uh, and so then we'll have... Uh, Brother Sneathan preaching for us in the main hour. So let's pray, and then we'll be dismissed for just a few minutes. Father, we do pray that you'd bless this dear family, Brother Ramesh and Sister Esther, and Lord, we pray that you'd just bless and empower that ministry in India. And Lord, we pray that uh, you'd put your hand of protection upon them so that they may uh, minister freely and reach others for Christ, plant churches, and defend Christian pastors. And Lord, that the work of God may go forward in that country. And Lord, we pray for our own country that we would not allow our, uh, our society to keep going downhill without hearing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for Brother Snethern and his uh, work and those from our own ministry here, Brother uh, Paul and Miss D and Miss Kimberly, all going to work uh, in India. I pray that you'd bless now during this intermission time before the main service. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sinful man in need of redemption, hopeless, helpless, sinner lost. But the Alpha and Omega brought the answer to 